Hello. Today we are going to take up an interesting study on anti-dumping, uh, anti-dumping duty, and uh, the case laws uh, as decided by the Indian courts. So, uh, all the students of international trade law, uh, they know about dumping. Uh, apart from international trade law students, dumping is so common that everyone needs to know about dumping and what is the law on it. Uh, what can happen if uh, one country dumps its products into other country? So what can happen? What is the remedy out of it? So these are the things that we will be discussing today and uh, we'll try to understand what is the law and practice of uh, India. So I'll, I'll be sharing my, what I would say that everyone knows about dumping, no? ordinary meaning of dumping. Everyone uh, has heard the word dumping. So what is the ordinary meaning? Whenever you ask the meaning of dumping, uh, someone will say that dumping means that, you know, uh, in terms of trade, it means that uh, some country sells its products into other country at a very, very low price. Uh, then it may become dumping. So this is the common understanding. Uh, apart from that, even dumping is like, uh, you know, dumping means you, you dump what? You dump those things which are waste. So th these waste things are dumped. So these are the common, uh, commonly used, uh, commonly used uh, understandings about dumping, about the word dumping. So ordinarily, in terms of trade, we understand that dumping means uh, that one country sells some products into other country at a very, very low price, which was not expected. Uh, but is that the technical meaning? The answer is, the technical meaning is not simply that. Uh, because there is no need of injury in the ordinary meaning. When we say dumping, ordinarily, if you ask the common person, dumping, they could say that uh, if a product is sold at a very low price, it may become dumping. But no one will say that whether it injures the domestic industry, whether you have to prove the injury or not. So the technical meaning we must know. And this technical meaning has been given in the GATT agreement, General Agreement on Tariff and Trade, 1947. So this is the agreement uh, which gave for the first time uh, meaning, technical meaning uh, to understand the word dumping. What are the important three, four elements which were given that we must know? Now, if we can see Article 6 of GATT, so this is one very important provision which is given in GATT. Article 6 says that there are uh, three, four basic elements. And the very first element is that is very, you know, you, you all know about it, that whenever there is a sale of particular good or a merchandise in another country at less than, and the word which was new, uh, which was used in GATT is normal value. So it was not uh, said that if a merchandise is sold at a very low price. So the word here, which was used in GATT is, was normal value. So if a product is uh, sold at less than normal value. This is a very first condition, less than normal value. Okay, we will try to understand the meaning of less than normal value uh, just in a few minutes. And thereafter, the important element is that what is the result of that? Right? So the result may be of two broad types. What are those two broad types? that it must either cause uh, material injury to the established industry in the other country where a particular good is exported 
or it may materially retard the establishment of a industry in that country. So either of these two things, whether if there is a material injury, actual material injury, which is caused to the domestic industry, or if there is a material retardation, material retardation means that by the dumping, what happens that there is a retardation. So the growth is the, the establishment or the growth of domestic industry is not accelerated, but it is retarded. Uh, by the dumping. So this is this is the this is one of the things that we you must remember. And the second thing is that it may either threaten to cause material injury to the established industry, or it may threaten to cause material retardation to the establishment of domestic industry. So either Threatening, so even a threat, earlier we had seen that there was a material injury. But even if there is a threat of material injury to the established industry, or if there is a threat of material retardation to the establishment of domestic industry, even then there is a dumping. So the case of dumping is made out if either of these three, four things that we have seen uh, what are the three, four, uh, so five things. Now we can say that we have seen five things. What are, what are the five things? First is that sale of a particular good at, at less than normal value. What is the second? Second is that it must cause material injury to the uh, established industry. What is the third? Third is that it must uh, cause material retardation to the establishment of domestic industry. What is the fourth? Fourth was that it must threaten the established industry. And what, what was the fifth? Fifth was that it must cause material retardation. It must threaten, sorry. It must threaten uh, the establishment of the domestic industry. So these are the five things that you must remember uh, when you have to understand the technical meaning of uh, dumping. So now you have seen that uh, the very first element was selling at a price less than normal value. Now what, how do you understand these words, normal value? Two words, normal value, right? So these two words have become important. What is the meaning of normal value? And if we know normal value, only then we can say that if a product is sold at less than normal value, then it will become dumped. So what is the meaning of normal value? How would you calculate the normal value? Now for that, we have to know uh, either of the three, four things again. Right. What are those three, four things? First, that if you know the export price of goods, export price, suppose if, uh, if, the, if a particular product, for example, uh, oxygen cylinder, if the oxygen cylinders, the cylinder which is produced in China, and if it is, uh, uh, if the export price of oxygen cylinder to India, is suppose uh, 20,000 a cylinder, then you know the export price, right? So 20,000 becomes the export price. And then you have to know the selling price of that good or the like goods in the domestic market. So suppose if the China, if the Republic of China uh, has the export price of oxygen cylinder at rupees 20,000 and, uh, and the domestic market, it, it sells the same uh, oxygen cylinder in the domestic market at suppose 40,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees. 
in the domestic market. Now, you have these two figures, these two data. What are those two? First is that, what is the export price? So export price of oxygen cylinder in India is suppose 20,000 rupees per cylinder. And what is the selling price of oxygen cylinder in China itself, in the domestic market? So what is the selling price of oxygen cylinder in China? So if you know these two, then you can calculate uh, the difference. And then you can say that whether this oxygen cylinder was sold less than normal value or not, right? So normal value is the, the, what is the normal value? The normal value in this case, suppose if the oxygen cylinder is sold in the domestic market at 40,000 per cylinder and export price is 20,000 per cylinder, then what is the normal value? Normal value is not the export price of goods in India but the normal value is the price of the same good or the like good in the domestic market. It means 40,000 rupees is the normal value of that product. So if the export price, what is the definition? If the export price, the definition is less than normal value. So how do you calculate less than normal value? In this case, we will say that if the export price is less than the comparable price of like goods in the domestic market, it is done. Right? So here we have seen that in the domestic market, the price was 40,000, the export price was 20,000. Whether it is dumping, whether this is sale below normal value, the answer is yes, this is sale below normal value. Okay, so this is the first way by which we can see that there is dumping or not. Now the second, second technique. What is the second technique? Suppose if the domestic market price is not at all. Suppose China does not sell oxygen cylinder. Although this is not possible, but just uh, we are imagining a situation. That suppose if a producer does not sell oxygen cylinder, producer from China does not sell oxygen cylinder in China, but it exports to India. So in that case, what do we do? So in that case, we have only the export price. We do not have the domestic price. So in that case, what will happen? Then two options, further two options are uh, available. What are those two options? So in that case, we will have to see that whether that company sells the product in any third country. So if that company sells the product in any third country, we can also see that price. If that price can be available, then it's fine. Hmm? Or if that company suppose does not sell the product, huh? then what will happen? If that company does not sell the product in any third country, in such case, what will happen? Then we have to see that what is the available price of the oxygen cylinder uh, in other country? Highest comparable price, right? So we may, we may see that, suppose if we have the data that the highest comparable price of oxygen cylinder, suppose in Japan is uh, 45,000 per cylinder. 45,000 rupees uh, per cylinder. So we have this data, right? Uh, so this, this is also relevant. Mm -hmm. So this will become the normal value of oxygen cylinder. Suppose if that is also not available, suppose if the particular product is only ex exported to India, suppose oxygen cylinder is only exported to India. And there is no comparable highest price which is available from third country. In that case, what will happen? This is the last scenario. And that last 
possible scenario is also provided for in the GATT Article 6. What does that say? That if in that case, you will have to construct the cost of production plus a reasonable addition of supply of the product to the market and then reasonable addition of profit. Right? So suppose if the cost of production, which may be constructed at maybe like suppose um, 30,000 rupees uh, for uh, oxygen cylinder, big oxygen cylinder, then selling it to the market and then making reasonable profit. So if you add all these things, it may become you know, 35 or 38,000. So in that case, uh, this will become the normal value. So what is the normal value? And then what is less than normal value? Now this slide, uh, uh, you can easily understand from this slide that how uh, the normal value, less than normal value can be explained. Uh, so you have in this scenario, there are three different countries, let's say A, B and C. A is the exporter of oxygen cylinder. B is the importer of oxygen cylinder and C is a third country where such oxygen cylinders are sold and bought in the market. Now, in this case, normal value of oxygen cylinder in country A, okay? What is country A? Country A is exporter. So the normal value of oxygen cylinder, what is the normal value? It means that the selling price of oxygen cylinder in country A is rupees 10,000. And export price of the same oxygen cylinder in country B is 5,000. So, is there a dumping or not? Is this the example of less than normal value? The answer is yes. This is the example of because here it is sold at less than normal. And then, suppose if the domestic price is not available, then this is also explained in this slide that if the same or like oxygen cylinder is not sold in that exporting country, country A, then the comparable price of oxygen cylinder in third country, which is the third country here, C, that needs to be known. If the price of oxygen cylinder in country C is 15,000, that would become now the normal value of oxygen cylinder because we do not have the domestic price available. So this is also one technique. And the last technique, what was, uh, what was said? That suppose if there is no sale either in the domestic market or in the third country, in that case. So in that case, what will happen? That we will have to construct the cost of production as well as we have to add the, uh, the, the transfer of goods to the market and then addition of reasonable profit, okay? So if a product is sold at below the normal value, the normal value can be calculated by way of these three, four techniques that we have understood, all right? Perhaps now this has, this has become very clear to you that how can we calculate this the normal value, all right? Um, as far as the remedy is concerned, you see, uh, as I have told you that this is a, a, the dumping causes injury to the domestic industry. And suppose if the country, which is the victim of dumping, if the country would wait for some international forum to act upon it, it may become very late. So this is a very, uh, this is a, a good remedy which is given under GATT as well as now under anti-dumping agreement that we will see just in a few seconds that the trade remedy in such case of dumping is available to every country. And that's very important. What is the trade remedy? Means what is the remedy available? in such case of uh, dumping. So the remedy is that every country can impose a duty 
and that duty will be called anti dumping duty ad duty so ad duty will uh, what is the objective of ad duty ad duty will uh, try to take away the injury which was caused by dump so this is a remedy which is available to all the parties to the debt when this ad duty can be imposed this duty can be imposed at the time of collection of import duty so we call it custom import duty collection at that time we can add anti dumping duty of suppose if a country a particular good is being dumped now the question may be that whether this duty because this is now the remedy available to every country whether the sovereign country can exercise the power to impose anti dumping duty to an extent that uh, it may be called arbitrary any percentage of anti dumping duty any amount of anti dumping duty can be imposed or not now here comes the catch and here comes the law the importance of law again the law says that ad duty should not be beyond what the words which are used again two words dumping margin it should not be beyond dumping margin and here all the restrictions on uh, arbitrary action that are imposed that what is that what is that law how does law regulate the imposition of anti dumping duty it says that it should not be beyond dumping margin so what is the meaning of dumping margin it should not be ad duty should not be more than dumping margin what is the meaning of dumping margin now you have to understand that dumping margin needs to be calculated on the basis of the law that is gat agreement and ad agreement anti dumping agreement and the ad agreement has detailed rules on making of investigation uh, regarding any complaint of dumping and then also to determine how much injury has been caused to the domestic industry right and then calculate the dumping margin so what is the broad meaning of dumping margin dumping margin means normal value minus export price so if the oxygen cylinder is sold uh in its own country for example i gave you the example of china suppose if china sells oxygen cylinder in china at 40000 inr indian national rupee uh and it the export price is 20000 so what will happen what is the normal value of oxygen cylinder the normal value is the price in at which oxygen cylinder is sold in china that is the normal value and what is the export price export price is the price which is uh, which is at the time of entry of port in india that is export price so we have to know both these things if the normal value is suppose 50000 and if the export price is 20000 then what is the dumping margin 30000 is the dumping margin so this is the broad calculation normal value minus export price and in percentage if you want to calculate it in percentage what is the percentage of duty which can be imposed so that you can say that you have to divide the normal value minus export price by export price and then multiply it by 100 so suppose if uh, the normal value is 50000 and the export price is 25000 then uh, the what is the percentage of dumping margin the percentage of dumping margin will be uh, 100% so 100% anti dumping duty can be imposed do you understand perhaps uh, you might have understood what is the how to calculate the domestic margin now one or two more things about uh, uh, 
and the imposition of anti-dumping duty on the basis of dumping margin that should also be understood that dumping margin if it is below two percent right i have just told you that how to calculate uh, percentage of dumping margin so if it is less than two percent then dumping margin uh, sorry anti-dumping duty should not be imposed because dumping margin is less than two percent right so uh, uh, what will be uh, two percent suppose if uh, 50,000 is the normal value of oxygen cylinder and uh, uh, and suppose if it is sold in at the rate of 49,000 rupees so uh, it means that there is no uh, so it means that dumping margin is very less so there is no need to uh, impose anti-dumping and import volume is also important what is the import the volume of imports if it is uh, less than three percent of import of like products in importing country then also anti-dumping duty so you know the volume is also important and the price uh, of ex export price is also very important so these two things if it is very less it is if the dumped product is uh, coming at at a, at a very small quantity, in a very small quantity, then also there is no need of imposition of that. Right? Um, one more thing that we must know that uh, can anti dumping duty be imposed on a retrospective basis? Means uh, from backward, from, from a point of time which is, which is, uh, uh, which is in the in the last month or last year or like that so before the point of time which is today so can it be can it be imposed or not the answer is yes in india we have the practice some countries they do not have this practice but we have this practice in india um final basic uh, thing that we must know about anti-dumping duty is that by imposition of anti-dumping duty uh, whether a country resorts to protectionist measure the answer is no, because protectionist measure would be only when the anti-dumping duty would be beyond the dumping margin. But here the law is that it should not be, the anti-dumping duty should not be beyond dumping margin. Therefore, uh, the, this duty has only the effect of remedying the distortionist effects of, uh, of the, the, the price uh, which, uh, which was, uh, which was, which was going to distort, you know, the domestic industry's price. So, this is how it's not a protectionist measure; rather, it's a remedying measure. Now we will have to look at some of the important provisions of uh, anti-dumping agreement. I told you about GATT Article Six. Now let us see because this AD agreement is very important because it gives you the detail, you know rules on investigation and inquiry and then you know making the determination of injury and thereafter it will say that uh, what can be the duration of uh, anti-dumping duty etc let us see so this anti-dumping agreement has only 18 articles and it has two annexes right so, and it has the procedure to calculate the dumping margin also. the basic principle is that AD duty cannot be imposed without investigation and the determination of injury to the domestic industry. Now, these are the two basic uh, principles, right? Anti-dumping cannot be imposed. It means that the action of a country must be on a sound basis, on, on, on a reason. And what are the reasons? That investigation was properly carried out and injury to the domestic industry was properly determined. So this AD agreement gives you the detailed rules on it. And the second very important principle is that there must be a causal link between the dumped imports and injury. There must be this causal link. Causal link means that you do not have to, suppose if the domestic industry would allege that uh, uh, there is an injury uh, and they will say that because of the dumped uh, products, there is an injury, but 
Suppose if there are also other factors by which there is an injury to the domestic industry, now that will not be relevant for the determination of injury. What is relevant to the determination of injury is that because of the dumped product, there is an injury to the domestic industry. If that causal link, if that you know, relationship of cause and effect that is established, then only there will be dumping. So this is very important. And this has been asserted by the ADA. Now, Article 2 gives you the detailed provisions governing the calculation of normal value and uh, score price. And also, I have told you like how you have to compare you know, highest comparable price. Uh, so how you have to you know, do fair comparison. So all these things are there in ADA. Then a couple of more rules we have to understand like Article 3. This will give you the rules on the determination of material injury to the domestic industry. And after that, Article 5, which deals with the conditions to start investigations into the injury. And then we will look at, there's two more articles, Article 10, which will tell you that there are two types of uh, anti-dumping duty, which can be uh, which, so at two point of time at which anti-dumping duty may be imposed. First is uh, provisional determination of uh, dumping margin and provisional uh, levying of anti-dumping duty. And second point of time when anti-dumping duty may be finally imposed is called final, final anti-dumping duty imposition. So, uh, it, so uh, provisional anti-dumping duty imposition is when the investigation is not final, when the injury determination is not final, right? So just if there is an, an indication that material injury may have been caused to domestic industry, provisionally, uh, you can say that anti-dumping duty may be imposed, right? So, uh, but final anti-dumping duty will only be imposed after proper investigation uh, and uh, final determination of injury to the domestic industry. And then Article 11, lastly, this is Article 11, which says that the duration, so this is again a restriction. The law says that the duration of anti-dumping duty should not be more than five years. It means that normally it is to be understood that the injury to the domestic industry would not be caused more than normally not more than uh, five years so if uh, it is again beyond five years if the injury is persisting then again what we'll have to do what will have to be done that you will have to again uh, domestic industry will again do the same thing apply uh, to the particular authority and uh, a particular authority will again investigate and again recommend uh, to the uh, to the anti-dumping duty levying uh, entity and thereafter all the anti-dumping duty uh, again can be imposed. So normally it should not be more than five years. Now we will move on to the India's law. We have seen the international trade law, GATT and anti-dumping agreement. Now we will particularly look at India's uh, law uh, because this is a trade remedy. Trade remedy, how India you know, makes a remedy against dumping. Now, every action of our country is based upon the, uh, the law which empowers a particular authority to impose anti-dumping. So we have two, three important uh, uh, things that we must know, two, three important laws. First is uh, the Custom Act. And uh, because Custom Act will tell you that uh, at the time of import of a good, import duty can be imposed. And uh, thereafter, custom tariff uh, rules. Now this is very important. And there is also Custom Tariff Act. And under Custom Tariff Act, custom tariff rules have been framed. In 1995, custom tariff identification, assessment, and collection of anti-dumping duty on 
dumped articles and for determination of injury rules were framed in 1995. So more than 25 years back, these rules were framed. And this, these rules are very uh, detailed rules, which has 24 sections, two annexers, and the first annexer is on principles which will govern the determination of normal value, export price, and dumping margin. And annexer two will tell you about the principles for determination of injury to the domestic industry, right? What is the definition of domestic industry? We all know now, uh, uh, AD agreement has also defined domestic industry uh, in article two, this tar custom tariff rules of 1995, this has also defined domestic industry in section two, almost in the same manner. Hmm? Now, I could not tell you even this fact is available in AD agreement also, but now we have to understand that how to determine that domestic industry is injured. Whether it is the requirement that suppose, uh, suppose dry cell batteries. So suppose if a um, country exports dry cell batteries to India, uh, whether the allegation that by the export of dry cell batteries to India, uh, all the domestic industry is injured and therefore whether there is a requirement that all the domestic industry that should complain to the authority? The answer is no. There are two tests, right? There are two tests to determine domestic industry, right? You don't have to say that, okay, 100% uh, domestic industry will have to complain. There are two tests. One is 25% test, other is 50% test. 25% test is that when the petitioners, suppose there are petitioners, there are five petitioners who have complained. So suppose if the output of five petitioners uh, is suppose uh, 1000 ton, and if it is divided by total output of domestic industry. So what is the total output of domestic industry? Suppose, 4,000 tons of a particular good. So, or 3,500 tons. So in this case, if, what is the, uh, how will you calculate? That output of petitioners will be divided by total output of domestic industry. So here the output of petitioner is suppose 1,000 ton and the total output of domestic industry is 3,500 ton. Then this will this will uh, satisfy 35 percent test because 3,500 uh, sorry uh, 1,000 divided by uh, 3,500 that is more than 25 percent. So this will be so it means that five petitioners who combined. Uh, Combined, uh, they produce 1,000 tons of a particular good, and the whole domestic industry produces 3,500 metric ton. So it means that only five petitioners they can complain, and it will move the particular authority which is empowered to investigate and determine the injury. Now the other test is 50%. Right, 50% test is uh, another test in which we have to look at the output of petitioners and then that will be divided by the support of domestic producers or workers. So support, if the support either affirmative or negative. So if the support of domestic producers, domestic industry is more than 50%, sorry, output of petitioner divided by the uh, support of domestic producer is more than 50%, then also that those number of petitioners, they can move to the given authority. Uh, so uh, they can apply, they can write an application that domestic industry is injured and then the 
empowered authority will have to investigate, right? So this is very important to know that whether when we say domestic industry, does it mean that every uh, component, every stakeholder of domestic industry will have to uh, complain to the designated authority, right? The answer is no, 25% test or 50%. Now I have told you that designated authority is empowered uh, to investigate. So what is the designated authority in India? So section three of custom tariff uh, rules says that the central government will appoint the designated authority. And uh, central government has appointed the Directorate General of Trade Remedies as the designated authority, DZTR. And, uh, this DZTR functions under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Uh, so Ministry of uh, Commerce and uh, Industry uh, is the, you know, uh, is the nodal agency under which this DZTR functions. DZTR is assisted by 11 investigating officers and costing officers. So both kinds of uh, officers are there and uh, they will uh, do the given things of you know, determination of injury and uh, investigation. So we have to know that these are the uh, important things, who is a designated authority. And uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, the whole uh, pyramid so designated authority here at the, is at the bottom and uh, what designated authority, which is DZTR, what DZTR does, DZTR has to determine the injury. When a complaint by domestic industry is filed regarding dumping, right? Uh, and the complaint will be filed by whom? Complaint will be filed by uh, by domestic industry or on behalf of domestic industry. Mm, and uh, DZTR can determine the injury, uh, preliminary and final, final also. Okay. At the time of preliminary determination of injury, reasonable indication of injury will be enough. And at the time of final injury of determination, proof of particular injury, um, that has to be determined. So proof will have to be produced. Whenever the final determination is made, it has to be submitted to the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Finance will have to take a call in three months, right? Whatever is the final determination of the designated authority, DZTR, it can be challenged in appeal to SESTAC, Custom Size Service Tax Affiliate Tribunal, and this SESTAT has uh, benches in seven cities and it is headquartered in New Delhi. And there can be a red petition which can be filed in the High Court also. Okay. This is the judicial structure uh, which is there and the tribunal structure. So, uh, adjudicative um, things are there. Now we will move on to see the uh, see the case laws. What is the judicial practice? But before doing it, uh, before doing it, we can also move on to uh, move on to see one more uh, thing that how Ministry of uh, Minister of Finance uh, that announced in Parliament customs duty exemption given to steel scrap last year is being extended for another year to provide relief to MSME secondary steel producers. Certain anti-dumping and CBD on stainless steel and coated steel flat products, bars of alloy steel and high-speed steel are being revoked in larger public interest considering prevailing high prices of metals. So you have seen that uh, uh, 
you have seen that how Minister of Finance was uh, announcing the removal of anti dumping duty from certain products in the Parliament of India. Now we will look at the judicial practice. Uh, there are two important decisions which we must know. One is Messrs. Kumho Petrochemicals Company versus Union of India, which was decided by Delhi High Court. Now, in this case, what happened that uh, the designated authority, which was at that moment of time, DZAD, uh, Directorate General of Allied Duties, which had made a report of its investigation and injury determination. And thereafter, uh, this report was submitted to the central government. The central government held its own inquiry and thereafter imposed anti-dumping duty for five years from 2009 to 2014. Domestic producer, which was represented by Fair Deal Polychem, made application to initiate sunset review. Sunset review means that when the AD duty was to expire at, uh, in 2014, at that moment of time, domestic producer uh, can again apply for initiation of sunset so review. So do not uh, cease to uh, take the anti dumping duty, but you have to again impose anti dumping duty. This is called initiation of sunset review and extending the imposition of anti dumping duty. So, domestic producer was saying that the anti dumping duty should be uh, reimposed and extended beyond. So, the government notified the extension of anti dumping duty in the official gazette before the expiry of five years. So just it was to expire in 2014 and just before the month in which it was to expire, the government notified in the official gazette the extension of anti-dumping duty. And this aggrieved the exporter. In this case, the exporter was Kumo Petrochemicals, which exported acrylonitrile butadiene rubber originating from South Korea. So, Homo petrochemicals was aggrieved by this decision of the government to reimpose anti dumping duty without notifying it in the official gazette before the expiry of five years. Now, the issue before the Delhi High Court was whether the injury to the domestic industry can continue after five years. And if so, whether such extension of anti dumping duty ought to have been notified in the official gazette and published before the expiry of five years period from the date of original notification in 2009. Justice Ravinder Bhatt, very intelligent sir. He held that the initiation of sunset review was valid, was proper. The need for this kind of review has been contemplated in articles uh, 11.1, 11.2, and 11.3 of anti-dumping agreement. And this is also there in section 9A uh, clause 5 of Customs Tariff Act. So this sunset review was proper. But Justice Bhatt said that whenever a sunset review is initiated, the anti-dumping duty should not continue because you have to first of all determine that whether anti-dumping duty can be reimposed or not. So in that meantime, AD duty should not continue. So what Justice Bhatt held that if the government wants to continue the anti-dumping duty beyond the given period, which was earlier notified, it has to issue a notification before the expiry of that period of five years. And therefore, the court held that the levy of anti-dumping duty in this case ended in 2014. If the government would have notified the extension of AD before 2014, then the extension would have been valid. So here, 
the notification was the notification was the extension was uh, sorry the extension of uh, anti dumping duty was notified after the anti dumping duty ended so this was not uh, this was not proper the court said that you have to issue a notification before the expiry of the period of 5 years if you have initiated sunset review after the expiry of 5 years then any duty should first of all have to stop and after you determine that injury is there still persisting then only you can reimpose after the notification in the official way right so the government has two options one that if it wants to extend then before the expiry of the notice you have to again issue a notification publish and publish it in the official way right without notifying in the official way if you extend the anti dumping duty this is not proper so this is very important uh, control which was uh, which was uh, judicially uh, framed uh, by justice but in kumo petrochemicals that the government cannot extend anti dumping duty without notifying it in the official gazette hmm, after the expiry of the notification earlier notification period moving on to the last case everedy industries india limited versus union of india now this is also a very good example you can see that in this case what happened that on behalf of the association of indian dry cell manufacturers hmm, india has a very strong dry cell manufacturer base everedy <coughs> panasonic india nippo now these uh, three uh, producers of indian dry cell they filed an application in 2015 before the designated authority which is dgtr for initiation of anti dumping investigation uh, of uh, dumping of batteries dry cell batteries from people's republic of china and vietnam so after this application was filed the designated authority issued a preliminary determination of injury and uh, it also issued the determination preliminary determination of dumping what was the period of investigation the period of investigation was uh, for one year from 1st april 2014 to 31st march 2015 and thereafter uh, there is a rule in the custom tariff rules also and also in the anti dumping agreement that the designated authority has to issue disclosure statement right before finally concluding the determination of injury it has to issue a disclosure statement right so after investigation is done what was disclosed what were the facts which were disclosed that will have to be first of all uh, made known to the interested parties that is called disclosure statement and then uh, the authority will ask comments on it and thereafter final determination of injury and thereafter recommendation to the government for waiving of anti dumping duty so the designated authority issued a disclosure statement to interested parties this disclosure statement ds contained essential facts of investigation and invited comments on the same the disclosure statement is very important that this statement established dumping and also injury and also causal link these are the three things which are very important and all these three things were established in the disclosure statement but the final determination when that was made in 16 september 16 then anti dumping duty was not recommended to the central so the domestic industry was taken aback the domestic industry challenged this final determination before the custom excise and service tax appellate tribunal just at and there also the domestic industry uh, could not be successful 
So STAT rejected the challenge and therefore Everett Industries filed a writ petition for the Delhi High Court. So what was the issue before the Delhi High Court? The issue was whether the final findings of the designated authority can be challenged on the basis that the disclosure statement confirmed dumping, but the final determination did not recommend imposition of anti dumping duties. Can it happen? Right. So, this is interesting that what the court said. The court, again in this case, division bench uh, led by Justice Ravinder Bhatt again and Justice A.K. Chawla, both the judges held that the basis of final determination of DGTR was uh, that despite dumping, the domestic demand of dry cell battery did not decrease. It means that there was no injury. If the domestic demand would have decreased, there decreased, uh, then we can say that uh, that domestic demand was decreased. So what could have happened? And then it may be that, that uh, there was no need of you know, uh, importing the, uh, the dry cell battery from different country. And second, court held, rather the share of domestic production did not match during the period of investigation. And the capacity existed. Though the capacity existed, the share of domestic production did not match with what? With the demand. So demand increased, but the domestic production did not uh, increase, even though capacity existed. It meant what? That domestic industry uh, made profits out of the situation. So, the court also came to the conclusion and the DGTR had also came to the same conclusion that the domestic manufacturers recorded significant profits, substantial profits. And therefore, the DGTR held that despite existence of dumping, there was no injurious effect on domestic industry. So, uh, if there is a dumping and there is no injury, on domestic industry, then there cannot be any remedy. There can be dumping, but there is no remedy. Right? So the technical meaning, what we have understood that there must be effect, injurious effect on the domestic industry. The court held that the domestic industry was not injured, rather it made profits, significant and substantial profits. And therefore the domestic industry was not injured and therefore whatever was the decision of the DGTR that cannot be uh, rejected even by the High Court. So High Court again uh, sustained the decision of the DGTR. What is the, that is the designated law. So now we will come to the conclusion that India's law on dumping is in consonance with GATT and Anti-Dumping Act. So this we have seen, okay, what is the law on dumping in India, we have the Custom Act, we have Custom Tariff Act, and we have the Custom Tariff Rules. So all these things are in consonance with GATT and ADA. So we, I told you, these are the three pillars, Custom Act, Custom Tariff Act, Custom Tariff Rules. These are the three pillars of the India's legal regime on anti-dumping. As you have seen that, dump, uh, that the designated authority in India is appointed by the central government and which is the DA? DA is DGTR, Directorate General of Trade Remedies. And if a person, if a domestic industry is aggrieved from the orders, from the uh, determination of injury by the DGTR, then appeal can be filed in SESTAT. And after that, High Court can have jurisdiction under writ uh, jurisdiction. Finally, we have also seen that the judicial decisions in India have matured enough in recent times. We have seen Kumho in Kumho petrochemicals case where the arbitrary decision by the central government to extend anti-dumping duty 
who was prevented by the court. And we have also seen that in Everett Industries case, the court did not itself take upon the mantle of the atomic analyst and superimposed its own decision on the designated authority. So, so these are the important takeaway points uh, which, must, which we must all know that in India, the anti-dumping uh, law is robust and uh, the judiciary has also contributed in making the, the legal regime successful. Thank you so much for uh, taking up uh, your time, uh, to indulging your time, for understanding this important uh, thing on anti-dumping. I hope that you might have understood the law and the practice of India on dumping. Uh, if you have liked the video, you should also like it and subscribe it. Thank you so much. God bless you all.